Hi guys, so this is a video on telling you how you can use LaTeX to write your year one interim project report. I'm going to go through how you assemble the file, how you use share LaTeX, and uh, just explain a bit of what's going on in the LaTeX code. So I'm recording this uh, as a first attempt, so we'll see. So bear with me, anything goes wrong, but hopefully it will behave itself. So as you can see, I've got up um, the share LaTeX site. So this is share LaTeX. Dot com. Um, so hopefully you've registered. If you haven't done so, um, register. If you're like me and you've already got an account, you can go to log in. So we're just going to log in and then we'll be ready to do it. You can also download various different editors which you can use um, LaTeX in on your computer. But this is a web interface and uh, it's a bit simpler and a bit easier to get going with. First up, why do you actually want to use LaTeX? Well, LaTeX is used in industry and in academia and it's a much more standard typeface for professional documents rather than Microsoft Word. So the idea of this is to get you used to using LaTeX in year one in a much more um, relaxed way where it's not compulsory before you go into year two where you will have to use LaTeX for every single one of your lab reports. So it's worth investing a little bit of time now because it will really help you out in year two. So you can create projects in Share LaTeX. Um, and I'm going to do a bit of a here's one I made earlier. But what you do is you create a new project, you give it a name, and then you can upload files to it. So I'll just show you. So I'm going to create, um, uh, actually I'm going to do it in a little bit of a different way because I've just realized there's an easier way to do it than how I've been doing it before. So if you go into Blackboard and go into either 171 or 172, whichever one is up relevant to you, they're both in the same place in each file. So if you go into Learning Resources um, and then you'll see for 171 you'll have a lab report LaTeX template. Um, 172s won't have this because you don't need to do a lab report in LaTeX this semester. But for everyone you want to go into the year one project and then um, you've got all of the documents that you had in your um, original lab pack and then if you go down you've got the interim report LaTeX template. So this is a zip file so what I'm going to do it says you know zip file containing all the files you need to get started with your year one project interim report. So what I'm going to do I'm going to download this I'm going to save the oh, I'll open it actually because then I know where it is um, and this is a zip file. Actually, I've done that wrong. That was foolish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually download it because then it will be easier. So if you save it um, and then <laughs> bear with me, this is what happens when you try and be clever. Um, so I'm going to just put that on my desktop for now because it will be easier to deal with. So um, that's just sitting there. So now I can go back into Share LaTeX and I can go New Project and I can upload a zipped project. So here you can actually select a file or you can just drag and drop. If I go to my desktop, I'm going to put my interim template up there. And this is the first time I've done it, so hopefully it will work. Because I've previously uploaded every file separately. Okay, so now it's uh, uploaded and it will bring you to this project setting. So give it a name. Um, I recommend you change the name of it. So call it so like team, I'm going to call myself team Z because I know there's some, t no team Z, team Z project, that's team Z interim, there we go. Okay, and this is really important now, this next bit, the root document, you need to select a root document, otherwise it will not work. And this is a common problem people have when they use share LaTeX is it won't compile and sometimes it won't actually give you an error, it just will hang and then it won't do anything. And the reason for that is because it has no root document. So you need to select the thing that's called .tex, that's the main one. Compiler, we want it to be PDF LaTeX because then we know it will produce a PDF. And public access, you can make it read only or read and write, but just set it to private for now. Um, and that's done. So that should now work. So that's all the settings done. Now what you can see is you've got this um, uh, information up here and what you've got is this is the name of the project up here that which I've called it and then you've got three files here you've got template a dot text which is the um, that's the main file that's what I've set here is the root document so I'm going to click on it here and see what we've got okay so this is the standard view and you can flip between two columns and just having 
the flat view, but then if you do flat view, you just need to click on here. Um, just give you a bit more um, space to see what you're doing. I like this. Um, and when you first open this, you'll think, oh, this looks horrific. The good news is that you don't really need to change very much of it. I know it looks daunting, but it's actually mostly done for you. And one of the reasons LaTeX is so powerful is that um, you don't need to change very much of the information to make it work. So don't change hardly any of this. So um, what have we got here? So this has, as you expect, you know, title. This is a command um, and year one project, interim report, team question mark. Change that to put your team. So I'm going to put team Z because that's what I've said I am. Um, these things here, it changes the font. So I've set this to be uh, SF default, which is sans serif, which is the one without. It's not Times New Roman because personally I don't like it. So I've just changed this command. And if you delete that command, you'll get your whole thing. If you delete this line, you'll get the whole thing in Times New Roman. But uh, that's going off a little bit. Um, everything that's got a percentage mark next to it is a comment. Uh, this is the same as MATLAB essentially where you've got a comment and everything after that is then a comment until you start the next line. So you can think of LaTeX as programming a lab report or programming a report. Um, I wrote my entire PhD thesis in LaTeX um, and it really helped me to then review my document because you produce a PDF which you can read and you don't have the sort of blindness to mistakes because you've been staring at the same thing. Anyway, back to um, the LaTeX. So most of this, all this is doing is producing your first page. So here it says anything in this bit is a so end title page, you know, we've just got all of this stuff here, which is all related to the title page. Um, so everything here is going on the front page. So you don't need to ask oh, a begin title page. There you go. So everything on here will go on the front page. So what have we got? We've got an abstract. You need to write some stuff in here. So this document describes the progress made so far in the year one robot project by team Z. Um, and the whole point is that this section, you've got to summarize what the whole document says in less than 150 words. So uh, good luck with that. That's an abstract. So um, the abstract you can think of in professional situations is read by people that want to get a sort of a flavor of what you've written. And then if your abstract's any good, they'll go on and read the rest of your work. Obviously, we're going to read more of it because you're being marked for this, but that's the point of an abstract generally. Um, also, we've added this box here, which you will have to include. So this says basically that you confirm you've read and understood the university's definitions of plagiarism. Um, in this context, it means you haven't copied from another group um, and you also haven't just copied and pasted loads of stuff from the internet without referencing. It's okay to get resources from the internet, but you must, must, must say that's where they've come from. That's all that, um, that's, that's the plagiarism definition in a summary, basically. But you should read the Code of Practice and Assessment Appendix L um, because you're saying you have read it. And this is available on the internet and it's in your student handbook. So uh, that's important. Um, but that's your definition of saying that you have read and understood it and you haven't cheated, essentially. Right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to compile this actually just to show you what's going on. So if you click on PDF, it will automatically compile it. And then if you make changes, you can recompile. Um, and this then shows what I've written. So um, I haven't changed anything. I put Team Z there because it was a question mark before. And all of this is then um, generated automatically for you. So this document describes the progress made so far in the year one pro robot project by Team Z. And then if you just replace what was in that section with your own words, that will all appear here when you press recompile. Then we've got this plagiarism declaration, which I've just talked to you about. Then you can see we've actually got this contents page um, and this bit here, you actually, if you click on it, they're hyperlinks. So the documents will link to itself. Um, and you can see that these sections also correspond to um, the sections in the PDF and this is really good if you've got someone who's using a screen reader for instance or they've got problems um, uh, um, accessibility issues and um, it makes it a lot easier for them to read because they can tab through in a way that you can't do in Microsoft Word unless you actually use the paragraph structures properly which is a little bit tricky in my opinion but 
there you go. So let's go back to our main um, template. So you can control where you're navigating through here. Um, this shows you everything you've got in the file. You'll see here that there's actually univcrest.png, which is an image because it's got a lovely little picture next to it. This is the university crest you can see here. Um, and if we didn't include that picture within this directory, that would be a blank space. And I'm just going to show you that in the main uh, document. So, um, do, 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 where is that in here? Haha, <laughs> it's been too clever and I've hidden it. Oh no, here it is. So, can you just see it says include graphics uh, width, that's not point four text width, unit crest. Um, that is the line of code which includes the file Univ Crest, um, which is this one here. So that tells you to put it into the document and it's width 0.4 of the text width. Um, and that just puts in the university crest at the top of your report. So a uh, table of contents is actually generated just here. This command slash table of contents will just generate that beautiful table of contents and it will look through and find all of the different sections and then um, generate a table of contents from that. So what have we got next? Group members. Right, this is a section that um, I've put, I've de defined section and then I've put an asterisk afterwards. Um, if you put an asterisk after a section number or a subsection, it will stop LaTeX giving it a number. So you don't want to have group members is uh, section one just because I think it looks a bit messy so that's all I've done I've just changed the command if you delete that command delete that asterisk it will give it a number then I've created a table so um, you can it's good if you can understand what's actually going on here but for your purposes all you actually need to do is just replace first name family name with the person's name and then replace the this bit with their actual student ID number and then put their role um, uh, let's show you what that looks like on the PDF. So I haven't changed anything, so I'm not recompiling. But you can see here, group members, there's no number next to that section. And it's actually created a table where you've just got first name, family name, student ID, and then you've got the role of whatever they're doing. So if I modify this in the document, I'm just going to type Leah Ridgeway. And oh, I, don't, I don't have a student ID number, so five, six, and just seven, eight, nine, let's do that. Um, and then if I just uh, go to the PDF and I recompile it, we will see, da, da, da. look, my name appears there and my student ID number that I've just made up appears there. So all you need to do is edit that code with the names that you need. Um, and it will save automatically as you compile. But if you just press Control S, um, it will save while you're going along. Um, if you need to add an extra line, all you do is just copy this code and just put in another line. And then if you recompile it, we will see that will just add an extra line to the table. There you go, there's an extra line there. So it's a lot to sort of get used to on the face of it, but once you sort of dig a little bit deeper, you'll find that it's actually quite simple to get going with. Um, I'm not going to go in how to define a table environment. Um, all I'm going to say is if you want to create a new table, copy and paste this and you'll have a table to begin with. And then there are loads and loads of LaTeX help documents on the internet. So if you type um, LaTeX table, it will bring up, there's a big good wiki book that tells you how to do it and what all the commands mean. Um, but uh, if you're interested in further information, go and help yourself. This is only a very brief introduction telling you the basics of what you need to know. Right, now we're going on to the introduction section. And this time I've defined section and I haven't put an asterisk in like I did up here. And that means it will actually have a number in the PDF. So in the PDF, can you see one introduction? I haven't had to type in number one. Uh, LaTeX will update it all for you. That means if you add things earlier into a document, it will all automatically update the numbers for you like you'd expect. So type your own introduction in this bit here. So brief introduction stating the aims of the project and how your group plans to design your robot to meet the aims. Um, include the text you wrote during the project introduction session in the lab. Remember that back in week one of semester two? Type that in as your starting point. 
um, progress so far. Again, how you plan to tackle the robot design, including in this section your control flow or your waterfall diagram. That's where I said, imagine you're the robot, think about what's going on. Um, so also talk about what's been achieved, how you've allocated work in your team, um, reference to your Gantt chart to conclude if your work is on course to be completed, and also please discuss any difficulties you've encountered and how you have or will tackle these. Um, if you've got any circuit diagrams, put them in here and explain what's going on. Um, so now I've said this is how you would include a figure. So you can use this code um, and you can, if you want to put another figure in, just copy and paste this whole section. So now I'll be able to put in two figures. Um, so I'm going to delete these comments. So if you just delete the percentages, it all becomes actual code. So I'm delete the whole thing. And now I'm going to put in a figure. So um, the main thing here you want to look at is um, this is the name of whatever file you're trying to include. And you need to upload this file into your project and you can do that by um, coming down here and you've got this symbol of a cloud and if you click on upload file you can then upload you can drag and drop from your computer and put whatever you want in you can either include what the actual file type is or you don't need that that's entirely optional um, to show you how to play with this I'm actually just going to cheat a bit and put in the uni university crest that I've already got in here to save having to find an image and upload it and play around with it um, so I'm going to actually compile this and I'll show you what happens so I'm going to click recompile because I've made some changes and then if we go down you can see progress so far this is the text about what you're doing and then you can see we've got this University of Liverpool crest and if you change the file name it'll change what file what image appears there as long as you've uploaded it into your project um, and you see you've actually also got a figure it says figure one waterfall diagram showing proposed logic sequence for the robot um, for example obviously that doesn't um, match that image but this is just showing you how to play around with it the other thing I'd like to show you here is um, so you can change your caption here um, type whatever you want between those brackets and that's what will appear underneath the image um, you can also give it a label this is for cross-referencing so you can say shown in figure one or figure two and it will automatically update it but I'm not going to go into that in this um, video just because it will take too long um, again have a look look up how you do LaTeX referencing of a figure and that will give you much more information on how to do it. It's not too complicated but I'm going to keep things simple. What I will show you is this command here. Normally uh, a common problem people do is they don't um, change the width of a figure and it tends to be so so small you can't see it. So if I change this to width is equal to 0.9 of text width and then I go to PDF and I go recompile you will see, fingers crossed, doing this in real time, that that image has got much, much bigger. Um, this is now set to be 0.9 of the text width. Um, so that's how you change the size of a figure. Um, oh, I don't know if this works. I make width is equal to text width. I don't know if that's a valid command, but we'll try it. It might not like it. Do, 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 do. Yes, it did, and that's the width of the text. So as you can see, if you click on the image, um, this box is actually the size of the image. So although it doesn't look like it's the te entire text width, you can see because this is the boundary of that image, it actually is. Um, so that's how you do your figure. And if you want to add another figure, you just use the code, you copy and paste, and then you just add in a new figure. Um, and I'm going to label this waterfall diagram two just so you can show I can show you it does work um, and I'm actually going to show you what happens if you try and compile because this is looking for an image called waterfall.jpg in this file in this folder rather and we don't actually have this here so what happens if we try and compile it well aha you can see it's not actually here it's looking for an image called waterfall.jpg and that doesn't exist so it's just stuck a box there with the file that it's looking for so um, if that happens when you compile it's because you haven't put in um, the, the actual image file into your 
project directory so you need to do that otherwise it will not work um, one of the things that you'll find LaTeX does is it tries to put images so images and text are spaced and it looks quite pretty um, that's not always ideal for documents where um, that are quite short or have sections which are quite short so what this might be is this this image will say is related to section two however it's now appeared in the census section which isn't what we really want so I'm going to show you um, a quick tip um, and can you see there's actually a cross here so after you've compiled it it's gone oh there's an error file waterfall.jpg not found so um, it's like when you're programming look at the um, problem look at the problems it throws up and uh, you know it's there to try and help you so we want to keep every image that's related to progress so far in this section you can do this using a nice little command called float barrier and you need to put in the capital B and the capital F, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, what this means is that any floats or any images or tables, etc., that belong to um, anything in code above this statement cannot appear below it. Um, the best way to choose, if I recompile, you will see what that actually does. So what it does is, <laughs> it didn't work fail. Um, why didn't it work? Float barrier doesn't like it. Undefined control sequence. Have I spelt it wrong? No. Um, that's using a package that I don't think it ex thinks exists. Oh, that's so annoying. Have I spelt it right? Float barrier. Oh, I'll have to look into that and get back to you. Because I use that loads in my LaTeX and it does not like it. So, um, I'll look into that and find out what's going on, but okay, don't worry about that for now. That's getting a bit advanced and that's me getting beyond the scope of what we really need to do. Um, basically, it doesn't matter if your images appear in slightly the wrong place. I'm not going to mark you down for that because that's getting a bit more advanced. Right, let's go back to what we're meant to be talking about. So, remember to put in whatever image you need and to change the size of it so you can actually read it, um, that would be useful. Then we come into these things called uh, subsections. So previously we've had section um, and now we're defining slash subsection. And as you'd expect, if this is section, oh, if this is section one, um, this will be subsection will be section 1.1 and so on. Um, so when I'm talking about progress so far, you can split it into two sections. You can split it into sensors and motor control if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Um, do whatever you think makes the document more readable. So if we look at the PDF, you can see sorry, it's section two, progress so far. So subsection defines 2.1 and then 2.2. And if you go back into the template, um, we then just go into section costing. Um, so this section should have details of the price for all components which you will use in your robot build. Remember your total build is £15. Um, I've been asked, oh what if I've got some components at home and I want to use them. Yep, yeah, it's fine, but please you must include how much they cost into your plan. Um, and also remember, unless you order through the department, the department will not pay for it. Um, you may want to use, here's an example of a list in LaTeX that you can use. If you use the enumerate command, it will give you a numbered list. So if you, I've just, if you delete the percentages, it will actually become something instead of just a line of code, a line of comments. So if you begin enumerate, until you come to end enumerate, it will create a numbered list. So first numbered item and then you can have slash sub item which gives you nested layers so if I just compile that I'll show you what that looks like so here we go here we go costing foot number one first numbered item nested layers second numbered item third numbered item and so on it automatically does the numbering for you that's the whole point of LaTeX is that it's meant to make your life easier but you just need to learn a bit about how it works um, and if you can if you're quite happy programming in C you'll probably be happy with LaTeX because they're kind of similar where you need to begin and end things otherwise it does not like it um, you can also do bullet points in LaTeX but um, I'm not gonna tell you how to do that you have to look it up if you want to use them again 
do the research. All the information is there. LaTeX is open source um, and loads of people use it and there's loads of help out there. Next up, conclusions. So summarize the progress of the project in a few sentences and reflect upon any delays. Oh, I've got our match bracket there, referencing your Gantt chart um, and so on. And that's it, pretty much. Um, you'll notice that everything which is actually just text, which will appear in the document is in black. Anything that's a command is in blue and anything that's a comment appears in green. That is Share LaTeX doing that for you. So that's making your life a bit easier as well. Right, next section, I'm gonna to come to the references section. So um, you don't need to mess with this. Bibliography style IEEE TRAN. This is the referencing style you should use in engineering. What that means is it appears as numbers and then in the references section, it will appear in the number, in the order that they're referenced, in the, they appear in the text. Um, if you've got friends who are studying uh, humanities and social sciences and the arts, they will probably use something which is called the Harvard style of referencing and that's in alphabetical order. Uh, also, it will appear in the text in different ways. So if you wanted to do it in Harvard, you would just change this to the Harvard command. This is all ready done for you, just borrowing people's code because there's no point reinventing the wheel. Right, next up, this is also important, bibliography, myrefs.bib. This should, you can call it whatever you want, but it has to be the same as the .bib file which you have got in your project. Myrefs.bib, that corresponds to that one up there. So this will create the reference style automatically. Um, and then this will actually just add a references section. Um, so let's have a quick look in the myrefs.bib folder. Here we've got, this is just a text file and it says various different things. So just use this as your template. Um, you've got booklets, um, you've got MISCs, okay? So, you know, if you've used an online source, how published? URL, here you go, year 2011. Um, this up here is, this is what you've actually called it. So, uh, <laughs> let's see if this works. Um, because there's, again, there's lots of different ways you can use referencing software because it's open source. So this is um, using a .bib file. This is the most basic style and I'm not actually very familiar with this because I used a piece of software to do my PhD and uh, it just makes life easier. So <laughs> you can look into that if you want and the library have lots of um, bibliographic software that you can actually use to make your life easier. Um, so I'm going to reference this bib2 file so I'm going to copy the name let's see I'm doing this live so let's see if I can remember and if it works so say in the intro progress so far uh, I'm gonna say this is a reference to something obviously write something that's meaningful that would help but I'm going to now cite something so if you go slash cite that says I'm going to insert a reference here and I'm going to put in the name of the reference. All right, let's see if this works. <laughs> Recompile. This will either work or go horrifically wrong, basically, if I can remember the command or not. Um, aha, right, well, it's got a question mark, so it sort of worked. So this is a reference to something, so it's no, it's trying to cite something, and um, we've got a references section, but it's not finding it. Why is it not finding it? Hmm, I'll try recompiling again. Sometimes um, you need to compile more than once if you've got a question mark in your references and it will fix itself. Not this time. Right, let's look at the question mark. Site bib2. Oh, hang on, let's have a look. Site. So let's have a look and see what we can find. Bibliography management. Let's have a look. So, you know, there's a wiki book on LaTeX. Um, how do we do it? All right, embedded system, begin, big, well, afraid it, did it, did it, citations, cite, yeah, that should have worked, cite, cite key is the cite key of the bib item you wish to cite. I thought that's what I'd done. Okay, let's have a look. Serves me right for trying to be clever. Right. Uh, 
Oh, have I done something silly? Am I meant to be doing this? Let's try that. Let's make sure I've got the full name. That might be the problem. Ah, right. Like I say, you just need to have a play and learn, really. Alright, let's see if that works now. So let's try compiling it. Oh yes, right, that works. So basically, make sure you've actually got the name of the thing you've called it, otherwise it won't work. So, this is a reference to something, and you can see it's just put a 1 in brackets, and it's also made it a nice little hyperlink, so if we click down it will bring you to the reference. So, here we go. That's how you put a reference in. So, basically, make sure, put in anything you want, use this as a template, um, give it an author, give it a title, give it a year, and how it's published. So. If it's a book, it will have a different title, obviously. If it's um, an online source, it will be also different. So make sure you put in the fields you need, and whatever you call it up here is what you'll need to use in the site command. So if you call it ref, um, what's that called? Colon bib2, then you need to make sure you've got all of that name, otherwise it won't work in here. So that's how you do it. You do site ref bib2 and then it will all sort itself out for you that's why latex is good as long as you tell it what to do properly um so that's referencing i'm going to talk about appendices briefly so um for the project report all you really need to do is add in whatever you need so um, don't mess with this stuff please this is basically going to make sure that the appendix the appendices are added to the table of contents um, so your appendix should include your Gantt chart and any relevant documents or images that have been referred to in the text of your report. Um, so your Gantt chart, add a scanned copy or image. Um, use the same code for inserting any other figure. And I've been through all of this. Um, and I've talked about changing the width. Make sure the file name is here and that it exists in your folder. Otherwise it won't work. Um, I've also put these sections. These are optional. So if you've used a logbook, um, you can put in any scanned pages if you think it's relevant. Um, you can scan using the photocopiers in the uh, computer lab on the third floor. Um, use the scan to me comment. Um, if you want help with that, just let me know. Um, and then also data sheets are relevant. And then absolutely finally, we've got end document. And that is the end of your report or whatever you've been writing. Um, so that's it, I think. That's my whistle-stop tour of how to use LaTeX to do your interim project report. So um, I hope that was helpful and I've got a drop-in session today.